Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of the Canadian SME Small Business Podcast, the go-to platform where we discuss the heartbeat of Canada's economy, our small businesses. This is your host SK. SMEs in Canada are known for their agility and adaptability, often navigating challenges with resourcefulness and creativity. They play a critical role in our economy, contributing significantly to our GDP and employment. Today, we have a special treat for all our listeners. We are diving into the dynamic and ever-evolving world of technology and IT consulting, a field that's not just reshaping businesses, but also the way we think about innovation and progress. Our guest today is Alice Ding. Alice Ding is the visionary founder and CEO of MyTech and Consulting Company, established in 2022. Her journey from a senior IT consultant with experience at SpaceX, the wrap-up Hollywood media, fresh books and government projects to the CEO role at Solar Feeds showcases her depth of expertise in tech world. Alice, a University of Waterloo computer science graduate, was inspired by Bill Gates' biography to pursue her entrepreneurial dreams. Under her leadership, MyTech and Consulting has flourished, offering a range of IT solutions to various sectors, including government and non-profits. Recently, she was honored with an invitation to the Forbes Agency Council, a testament to her company's success and her personal achievements. Today, we are delving into the world of technology and IT consulting, exploring its impact on small businesses and why supporting local enterprise is essential. Without further ado, let's get started. Good morning, Alice. Welcome to the Canadian SME Small Business Podcast. How are you today? I'm fine, do you? I'm very fine. Thank you so much. Uh, it's truly an honor to have you here, uh, you know, your journey from a passionate IT consultant uh, to a successful entrepreneur is incredibly inspiring. Uh, let's explore your experiences and insights. Uh, in the field of IT consulting, where technology is rapidly, you know, becoming integral to various uh, industries, uh, you often encounter clients uh, who may not be well versed in technology. Uh, this presents unique challenges. Alice, in your experience, how do you address working with clients who are not tech savvy? For clients who are not tech savvy, we need to put ourselves in their shoes. We need to use their language. We need to stand at their point of view. They may not understand uh, most of the technology part. They may not understand the jargon. So we can tell them how we can help with their business instead of telling them how we need to do this using the latest technology in details. So it's all about communication. So at this time, we, sometimes we are not uh, professionals or experts. We are the bridge between the business and the technology. Uh, it's all, uh, it's, so the communication is very important. So we need to use their language, stand at their point of view, um, and also listen to their feedbacks and also become the bridge between the business and the technology part. Uh, can you share an example where uh, you successfully bridged this tech knowledge gap? So uh, recently I had a dwarf client, so he didn't understand why they need SEO for their business. So I was trying to uh, explain why they need SEO for their business. So I explained it in simple languages. Um, so I tell them a story like, uh, imagine them, like if you are a golfer, so how would you find a, a indoor golf place? Uh, and uh, if you don't know any, like any golf uh, near your home, so maybe you will ask your friends a referral or maybe uh, you will uh, search online. Uh, but how should you search online? So the most common way for you is to uh, go to the search engines, for example, Google, right? right. So you enter the keywords, uh, for example, Toronto Indoor Dwarf. Uh, you will see a listing, like a listing of uh, dwarf places there. So you will choose one there and uh, look at the reviews or the ratings there and uh, go to the dwarf there. So uh, if your uh, listing is on the first page of the Google uh, search results, so that means you will have more traffic and more potential clients uh, to go to your place. So uh, that's why uh, you need your uh, SEO uh, 
our SEO services. So after he uh, and I also I showed him this by my computer with my laptop, so he can know this well like visually by himself. So after he understood why uh, we need this uh, service, uh, he accepted our service and uh, paid for us. SEO like everyone uh, has to be very you know like careful about uh, their SEO uh, like search engine optimization so that they mm -hmm. can be found online when people are looking for the service. Uh, that's fascinating approach, Alice. You know, your ability to make technology accessible to all the clients, uh, regardless of their tech proficiency, uh, truly sets my tech and consulting apart in the industry. Now, customizing solutions to meet the specific needs of each business is a critical aspect of IT consulting. Uh, you know, like requiring both skills and adaptability, especially in today's rapidly evolving technological uh, landscape. Alice, how do you tailor your approach uh, to meet the diverse uh, business requirements. So for my tech and consulting, we are pioneering a more customized and flexible uh, level of services. So we are more than IT leader here. We uh, we are more we are more like a business uh, partner for your uh, business. Um, so the enterprise and the companies in United States and Canada uh, needs our help uh, for a different uh, diversity of the perspectives here. So we provide uh, different levels of managed service. Uh, we give them uh, flexible terms so they can only pay what they want for their services. So it's all customized. And uh, also we have uh, extraordinary uh, terms uh, for them to build the trust and the relationships for their business. Uh, thank you for sharing that, Alice. You know, like uh, your insights highlighting the importance of customization in IT consulting, uh, ensuring each client's unique needs are met effectively. Uh, you know, now we are talk going to talk about the effective team management. You know, uh, effective team management is a cornerstone of successful project delivery, right? Uh, especially in the dynamic field of technology, uh, where teams must adapt to rapid changes. Uh, Alice, what strategies do you employ in leading your team? Uh, as a team leader, the first thing you need to do is to create, to build uh, great teams um, that can be stronger and stronger. So first, we need to hire talents. Um, so uh, we, we, we may hire someone smarter than you. Um, so there is a saying, hire slow and fire fast. So we need to uh, strictly uh, screen the talents there and provide interviews there and uh, select the most uh, uh, appropriate person there. And the second thing is uh, we need to cultivate uh, these uh, talents and create a clear uh, mechanism for the Trump, for the business uh, so they can develop their skills and grow with us together. Um, so we have uh, different uh, kind of uh, mechanisms here and we have the promotion systems and also other systems here. Um, as a leader, we, I, we need to know like uh, what kind of uh, atmosphere for the teams, so do they uh, like what? They, how they do uh, things together? Do they cooperate or do they comp uh, compete together? Um, so yeah, so yeah. as a leader, you need to consider the atmosphere for your team at the beginning of the work. Uh, thanks, Alice, for sharing that with us. Uh, like, how do you ensure your team stays motivated and aligned with the company's vision? So the company must have a clear mechanism for uh, what they need to do and uh, what they will uh, achieve for the result. So we have a, also we have a promotion, a, comp a compensation re uh, reward system and also a promotion system. Uh, thank you, Shailin, for uh, this uh, incredible insights, Alice. You know that strategies you use for, uh, for the team management uh, not only foster a productive environment, uh, but also resonate, the, uh, resonate with the core values of leadership leadership and uh, teamwork, you know. Uh, joining prestigious networks like the Forbes uh, Agency Council is a significant uh, milestone that reflects both personal and organizational growth. For the listeners who might uh, don't know about the Forbes uh, Agency Council, it's a, you know, like uh, it's a highly esteemed group of leaders from the business world. Uh, how does this uh, achievement reflect on your career and my tech consulting growth? Yeah, so I was invited to the Forbes agency, uh, council agency uh, this summer, this year. Uh, so due to the diver my expert and diversity of the digital marketing and IT consulting here. Um, so 
uh, after I got accepted into the agency, I like I've like I met many people there. So there is uh, in Forbes agency, they have uh, internal networks and they have uh, like uh, uh, exchange programs uh, and events there. So you can communicate and learn with others. Uh, we also have a uh, quarterly meetings here. Um, so. Uh, I like I uh, I share many knowledge and I learn a lot from them. And uh, also in the agency, I can publish uh, the articles on the Forbes dot com. Okay, uh, you know, like uh, what impact do you believe uh, this will have on your uh, future endeavors? Uh, this will provide me opportunity to meet more, more talented people and also give me opportunity to share my knowledge with others. Okay, thank you. Uh, it's clear that, you know, your inclusion in the Forbes Agency Council is more than just an honor. It's a reflection of your hard work and dedication to the field of IT consulting. We are excited to see where uh, this takes you and my tech consulting. Uh, securing a major uh, government project uh, is a testament uh, to a company's, you know, expertise and reliability in the competitive tech industry, often involving navigating through complex challenges and requirements. What do you believe uh, distinguishes my tech and um, and consulting in securing these high profile projects okay so first of all we have a uh, lot of uh, uh, high profile portfolios uh, so we worked for space uh, apps before and we worked for the government of Ontario and the British Columbian before uh, uh, also, we worked for uh, different banks before and the U.S. clients before. Um, so I believe our uh, professional technology skills and uh, our uh, portfolios will uh, help us win the client. Uh, the second thing is we have a proficient uh, project management. So we have uh, the uh, excellent uh, communications, as you know. Um, so that's very important because we care about our clients. Uh, so we manage the project well, so they meet the deadlines of the uh, the project. So that's um, how we keep our high-profile clients. Okay. How do these projects, uh, Alice, align with your company's long-term goals? We will pursue more medium to large clients in future, especially the Canadian ones and the United States ones. Uh, so the current clients are the best uh, portfolio for us, and they provided uh, um, positive feedbacks for us. So I believe uh, they will help us with the uh, future roles. Uh, Alice, before we conclude, uh, could you offer any, you know, like any tips or advice for aspiring IT consultants or entrepreneurs listening to us today? Uh, so there are a few uh, challenges uh, during the project management. So the communication is always the most important thing. So for big projects, uh, so always be more specific for the inner scope and uh, constantly to communicate with your clients. Um, so you need to prioritize your time management and uh, also have uh, hold regularly a uh, meeting with your team members. Uh, thank you, Alice, you know, for sharing your valuable insights and experiences uh, with us today. It's been a wonderful conversation and we wish you continued success uh, in your endeavors. Yeah, thank you for having me today too. It's a pleasure hosting you today. Thank you. We thank Alice Ding for joining us today and sharing her valuable insights. From today's conversation, the key takeaway is the importance of adaptability and understanding clients' need in the tech consulting world. We also want to thank our partners, RBC, UPS, and Zero. Remember to subscribe to Canadian SME Small Business Magazine at canadiansme.ca for more inspiring stories and insights. Until next time, keep supporting and growing with your local small businesses. Thank you.